folks. The healer's in the house tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Thank God. Be happy uh, spoken prayer with Glory to God. Glory My to sister's God. having a lot of anxiety. She's got to have knee surgery in the morning. She's having a knee replacement. Her name's Kathy. Just remember Kathy. Anybody else? Brother Mother's all fell a little under the weather tonight. She's sneaking by. Let's pray for her. Pray for you, Brother Don. I picked you be young. I put them dollars in this little kid, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pray for you, Brother Don. We, uh, you know, the Bible said when one member suffers, let all the members That's suffer. right. Yes. 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 It might not be us today, but it could be us tomorrow. That's right. We don't know. Anybody else got any requests? Brother Tom, I've got one of the women in the house. Just remember, Sister Johnny. She's got to get her test back Thursday and going to stop on Thursday. She's in, she, my understanding, she's been in bed all day today. She gets migraine headaches. She can't hardly lift her head up off the pillow. She's real dizzy. So y'all pray for her. And then God said, she's yes. one of them that Cheryl just stood for her sister issue too. She stood in prayer for her. Let's remember this. Have that behind you. Brother Claude, y'all keep remembering my husband, my children. The Lord has touched them, touched their heart. Amen. Just remember these. How about brother unspoken and uplifting the hand? And if you've got an offer, just put it in the basket in the back. And God knows what to do with that. That's right. Amen. So let's stand and we'll go to the Lord in prayer and so good to see the Peters, and God's going to use you, Sister Peters. Yeah. He'll get you out of that shyness, and he'll put you on fire, and he'll put boldness in you. <laughs> Brother Peters, if you would lead us to the Lord. Lord God, we just thank you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time. We just thank you for your 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 time. Lord, you know everything, Lord.
And it shall be said in that day. Y'all see that phrase, in that day? That's talking about the last days, the days of the end. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. And he will save us. Yes. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Amen. And the church says amen. 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 The word of God. Let me see if I can figure out where the Lord wants me to go with this. And I'll start out by saying Isaiah the prophet. It's called uh, what we call the you got the major and the minor prophets. He's a major prophet. As a matter of fact, he was the first major prophet to prophesy in the Old Testament. And by saying major, it's not that he's any better than any other prophet. It's just the amount of the content that he prophesied. It was greater than what the minor prophets prophesied. And Isaiah uses terminology in his writings that the other prophets, Terry and Tangy, do not use. And by that, God gifted him with such a foresight that he was able 750 years before Calvary. He saw into the realm of the future. He saw the day that Christ would uh, be put upon the cross of Calvary. He saw in the day to where you and I are living in. And God through the spirit of prophecy. Gave him and he foretold things. That were going to take place. For example he wrote about Calvary. We're all familiar with Isaiah 53. We know those, those prophecies. But when he wrote Isaiah 53, along with other writings, he wrote them as though in his day they had already taken place. He wrote them as though they were in the past tense because he saw so clearly what was coming up in the future 750 years before it took place and seven and a half centuries later, it happened. He said he was wounded. He was bruised for our iniquity. Amen. The chastisement of his peace was upon us. And this had never even taken place. That's what God did for the prophet Isaiah. Would to God in the day we're living in, in this church world, that we could receive the gifts. They're there for us. They need to be used in this church. The spirit of prophecy, it is vital to the, to the moving of what takes place in the house of God. We need the gifts in operation in this church. Amen. It is a, it's a warning to us. It is a guard to us. And in his writings, Isaiah had earlier talked, he took the time to talk to the Jewish people and he talked about how they were going to be carried away into bondage and they were going to be in Babylon for 70 years. And he prophesied that before it ever took place. He also said, by the way, the enemies are also going to be destroyed. And he said, one day after the 70 years, you're going to come out of captivity. So he gave them hope in what was going to take place. And about that time, he said the kingdom of God is going to come upon the world. And it talks about peace. And he tells them there's coming a day through that thousand year millennial reign that's coming upon the earth. And he said there's going to be peace and there's going to be prosperity and there's going to be unity to come back into the world after the Antichrist is put down, after the battle of Armageddon, after the, through the thousand year millennial reign when Christ is going to reign again. You would think, Brother Claude, 
somebody gave you that kind of a prophecy about the good things that were going to come, they would have loved him. That's right. That's right. They would have said, man, God really is using you, and, and we're going to agree with everything you're saying, and we just love you. But do you know it was not like that? Do you know what they did to him instead? They killed him because he prophesied what the Lord God had given him to say. They killed him. He prophesied under four different kingdoms and four different kings who were in, in authority. He was there under the northern and the southern kingdom when those kingdoms had split. And the Bible itself does not tell us how he was killed, but history does. The history books, Brother T.J., tell us what happened to Isaiah. And it happened when it was under King Manasseh. They took him and they found a hollow log and they put him inside of the hollow log. And they took a wooden saw and they sawed him in half inside that log. That's what they did to the man of God. And church, we are going into a time and an age when we think it's bad now. You just wait. America has it easy right now. America is not under what the world, a lot of the world is under and what the world is going to be going into. But you hang in there, church. You hang in there. I'm telling you, this world is going into things like it has never, ever seen before. We know that Hebrews chapter 11 confirms when it talks about the heroes of faith and it said that some of those heroes of faith had been sawed asunder. Let me tell you something here this morning, this evening. This book right here has cost something. That's right. There are men and women who have paid a price to be able to get this book put out. And they were killed, they were murdered in all types of torturous ways. And not only that, in the other countries around the world, they're being murdered by the droves for this book right here. Don't you ever let anybody tell you that this book right here is not worth anything. Don't you ever take it for granted. That's right. Come on. There's a horrible price that's being paid. And I'm going to tell you something. It's hard to find in America People who will live for Jesus Christ, much less anybody that will die for him. Come on, come on. Come on. I'm going to say something. Somebody, we, we've got a lady that watches us on live stream and she's out in Arkansas. She sent me a, a video and I watched it. It made me sick to my stomach. In this video, Maybe some of y'all have seen me along the line, but I'm not going to name the preacher. I won't do that openly because I won't be little. One of our major preachers, been preaching for years, and I listened to what he said. And you would know him if I named him. And he must have been doing some kind of preaching, and it had to do with uh, failure. And he made this statement, and I had to go back and listen again. I couldn't believe it. He said, the biggest failure that you will find anywhere is in the Bible. He said, the greatest one who has ever failed is God. That's what he said. And he proceeded to say, he was giving examples. He said, God failed it with Lucifer because Lucifer tried to overthrow him. He was kicked out, but he said, God failed there. He said, God failed in the garden because Adam and Eve, they failed. And he started naming some other things. That, and he said, again, the biggest failure is God. I've got news for him. The God that we serve has never failed. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. 
and we have we see a little bit of deliverance, but it doesn't seem to last very long because right in behind it comes another battle and Come another on. battle and another battle. But you know, I got to the point I said, Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You're delivering me again. And God, I don't know how you're going to do it. Because you're going to yeah. Yeah. You're going to bring me out of it. Praise be to God. And the devil would have us to get into depression. That's and right. the devil would whisper and tell us, your God won't do it this time. Your God won't deliver you. But he's a liar. Yeah. Because yeah. God, he will either take us through it or he'll go in with us yeah. or he'll give us yeah. out. Yeah. But he will deliver us. Amen. Whoa, oh. praise be to Glory. God tonight. Glory. And all that brings me to what I want to preach on. At least I think I do. Someday soon. Someday soon. Here's the picture of what, and, and I didn't read all the scriptures. You read that chapter when you go home. And what is taking place is that Isaiah begins to talk about a, a terrible storms that are coming upon the land and what the people are going to be going through. But he said God has given us promises and God will give us the strength, and he will deliver us. He said, when we are weak, then, then are, are we strong? Yes. Our strength, his strength is made perfect when we are weak. Do you understand? Have you ever felt too small for what God wanted you to do? Amen. Have you ever felt like I'm too weak to get it accomplished? I can't do it on my own. God, if you don't help me, I can't get it done. Amen. Or have you yeah. ever felt like there's just not enough inside of me to be able to get it done? And there's not, church. You have no idea when I go to study, and, and I, I don't mean to look at woe is me or nothing like that, but you have no concept how I have to fall on my face to God, and I have to say, God, I can't do this. God, I'm not worthy. I don't know how. If you don't do it through me, God, it's not going to get accomplished. Amen. 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 Holy God. We can't do it, church, but we've got a God who can do it for us. Yes. And I, I fall yes. back so many times. Travis, I go back even today after 45 years of preaching the Word of God. I go back and I remind the Lord. I say, now God, I don't feel like I've really got this. But God, you made me a promise when I was kneeling in my home in Rotherfield, West Virginia, and I was on my knees, and you told me from a voice from eternity that come down into my home and spoke to me and said, this day I commission you to go into the fields and win souls. I will anoint you. I give you a double part. That's what I have. I say, God, you made me a promise. I can't do it, but you said, and, and, and he told me, he said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. I will go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. And that's what gets me through sermon after sermon after sermon that I preach behind this pulpit. I am nobody but a woman. I'm nothing special. I don't do anything that anybody else doesn't do. I'm just a servant of the Lord called by God. And I've got a duty to do. And I do it to the best of my ability. Amen. Yeah. Holy God. But it doesn't keep me and my flesh from feeling like I'm not good enough. That's right. I can't do it. That's right. But I say, God, you can do it through me. Yes. You can do it through yes. And thank God, He gives me the strength. He gives me the strength. Amen. And it also, Isaiah says, He is our refuge. Think about that. He is a place. He's our hiding place. We can hide in Him. He's sufficient in whatever weather is sent our way. I'm talking about spiritually. If you've ever been through a spiritual hurricane or a spiritual tornado, then you know what it's like to go through what the demons of hell would put you through. But I'm here to tell you God is our refuge tonight. Brother Nisi, we don't have to worry about 
about anything. And then he says, uh, we ought to praise him because he's a shelter when the wind blows. Amen. <laughs> We've all had winds of adversity. We've all got our situations and our problems. But he said we ought to praise him. And, and Isaiah talks about a wall. He said God has put him behind the wall because the storms are coming. And when you get behind that wall, he says, now I can't even feel the wind blowing. You see, God puts us. We're his, he's our refuge. He gives us strength. He's our high tower. He's our mighty God. And he's got a wall that you and I can get behind when we face adversity. Sister Luke, what is that wall? It's this word right here. Yeah. This is the wall that he puts us behind. Yeah. The promises of an almighty God of heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Praise That's our Amen. spiritual wall. If we would just seek it and look to it. And he said, the only wall that will withstand the things that come our way is God's word, church. God's word, you can take it to the bank. That's Amen. Right. That's God's right. word will do when you're living. It'll do when you're dying. It'll still be standing when the world's on fire. Right. Yet this word right here will never burn up. That's right. Amen. It'll be there. It was Alpha. It'll be Omega. It's the beginning. And it is the end. Yes. Hallelujah. And he begins, Isaiah, uh, it begins to prophesy. And God gives him four or five different basic promises. And one of them was that the devil, in verse 7, the devil will be defeated. He said he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people. Whether we like it or not, this world is under the influence of Satan. Yes. Yes. We live in a sin-cursed world. That's right. But he said, I know that the veil was torn, the one that was in the temple when Jesus died upon the cross. But I'm talking about a spiritual covering over the eyes and the hearts and the mind of the world that is sick with sin. Yeah. And you don't have to look far to see evil. That's right. It's everywhere. The court systems are trying to release prisoners earlier because they don't have the facilities anymore to be able to incarcerate them anymore. They, it's overflowing because of sin. But he says, in this mountain, what's he prophesying? There's coming a time when we are going to stand upon the mountain of God. And thank God there will be no sin there. There will be no devil there. Do you hear me, church? Right. And he went on to say that veil, that veil that is spread up over the eyes and the hearts of the nation, it's going to be lifted. Not only will the devil be defeated, but he said the darkness will be lifted. You know there's some things in this Bible we don't fully understand. You might, but I don't. There's some things that, that people laugh at us over. That's right. And they'll question us. Well, well, why? How, how, how's that? Why? And I have to say, well, I don't know. I just believe it. I believe it because the Bible says it. Amen. That's right. Yep. And I don't have to understand everything. Yep. Some things are a mystery to us, Brother Warren. Godliness is a mystery. How that he can make us holy. I don't know how he can do that. Holiness itself is a mystery. His love, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a mystery. Yes. The resurrection is a mystery. I don't know how he's going to do all that, but Brother Claude, I believe he's going to do it. Yes, amen. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have to have all these answers. Praise God. Not only that, but Isaiah said death is going to be destroyed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, brave, where is your victory? Death will be gone. We've seen a lot of death. Even since 2020, you look at how many people we have lost connected with this church alone. But there is coming.
coming a time, Sister Diane, honey, when death is going to be destroyed and we don't have to watch our children die before the parents do anymore. Hallelujah. And then he said he's going to dry the tears from our eyes. Yes. What a promise yes. from God. What a promise yes. from the hand of God. The tears that have been shed down here. But he's going to take that big old Holy Spirit like a handkerchief. And he's going to come, take you, and he's going to wipe the tears out of our life and out of our eyes. Yes. What a promise that he himself is going to teach us and show us what to do. And he said it's coming a day when the rebuke of the people shall be taken away. Out of all the earth, what is the rebuke of the people? It's the depravity. It's the sin that this world is under. This world is under a curse. I say it again. We're the born again believers. But yet we still live in a sin cursed world. But one day that rebuke is going to be gone. And we're going to have peace. And we're going to have perfection forevermore. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Amen. Amen. Praise God yes. tonight. Praise God. The other thing, and then I'll try to finish this up. It said, it shall be said in that day. That phrase, in that day, in the day of the end, the end time, is the most common phrase in the book of Isaiah. You'll find it said in his book more than you will in any other book of the Bible. Forty-three times Isaiah uses that phrase, in that day. And he's saying, we're behind the wall, which is the word of God, that there are promises that he has given to us. And he's saying these things are a reality. They're going to come to pass. And let me say this in a way that maybe some of us can understand it better than the way I've been putting it. But honey, I'm going to tell you tonight that someday soon the songwriter said I will leave it all behind. You hear me, church? Someday, soon, the hospitals will all be closed. They'll have to go out of business. The funeral homes, someday soon, are going to have to close up. And the grave diggers are going to have to lose their jobs. One day soon and someday soon, cancer is going to be gone forever. Someday soon, there is going to be no dialysis treatments. Someday soon, there's going to be no worries about the infirmities of life. Someday soon, there's going to be no diabetes. There's going to be no MS. There's going to be no Parkinson's. Someday soon, arthritis is going to be gone. Heart trouble is going to be gone. Sickness will never be there again. Someday soon, infections will never attack our bodies. Someday soon, we're going to be young again. Hallelujah. And it's going to take us to a place of perfection. Amen. Praise be to God. He's taken us to a place where the lamb will lay down with the lion. And body, the serpent will refuse to bite. Woo, hallelujah to God. And children will never be abused again. They will never be mistreated. Someday soon, honey, we will never go to bed hungry again. And there will never be a burden again that we got to carry. And we're going to be able to finally rest from all of our labors someday soon. Amen. And in that day, someday soon, the chains of addiction are going to be broken. The jails are going to be emptied out. Oh, hallelujah. Someday soon, yeah. it's all going to be over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All over the house. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the holy, holy name. Yes, Church, some golden daybreak. Yes. The sun. Judy, you can come on up here if you want to. The sun, there's going to be a time when it's going to be no need of the sun or the moon to have to shine.
Because God and the Lamb are going to be the light of that city. Oh, children, we're going to a place. My goodness, 1,500 miles high, 1,500 miles square. It's got streets of gold. The gates into that city are made out of pearl. Oh, the tree of life is over. My Lord God, we're going to a place, Travis, where we're going to see your daddy again. Where we're going to see this again. Where we're going to see the sun. We're going to see all of those that have gone on before us and there'll be no more word. And we're going to walk over and say, it's so good to see you again. And your daddy's going to say, I've been waiting on you, Travis. I knew you was going to make it. And you ain't no We're going 